hello kids and welcome to week nine. Did you have fun this past week? Are you learning your scriptures and making your crafts and sending in your videos? Well, we've got some special things to share with you tonight. So let's pray, then we'll say our pledges, and then we'll find out about those special things. Everybody's heads bowed, and eyes closed, and let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the blessings that you give us each and every day, for watching over us and keeping us safe in your arms. We pray that you'll continue to protect us, continue to lead us, and continue to guide us. Help us to have fun tonight as we do Awana, and we pray for your special blessings upon each and every child and their families. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, well, let's say our pledges. Which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I pledge allegiance to the Alana flag, which stands for the Awana Club, whose goal is to reach boys and girls with, with the gospel of Christ and train them to serve Him. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path, and will hide its words in my heart, that I might not sin against God. All right, kids, let's say our Awana motto together. Are you ready? Here we go. Approved workman are not ashamed. Approved workmen are not ashamed. And let's also say our Awana scripture together. Do you remember it? It's Ephesians 4, 32. Be kind to one another, Ephesians 4, 32. Great job. Last week we learned that God delivered Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego from the king. Remember that God's people were captives in Babylon because of their sin. So when they refused to bow down to King Nebuchadnezzar's statue, he threw them into the fiery furnace. And after they came out unharmed, you remember Nebuchadnezzar praised God for rescuing those three friends. In fact, Nebuchadnezzar even sent a message through the whole kingdom saying that everyone everywhere had to show respect to the one true God. King Nebuchadnezzar, he was a powerful king and he built a strong empire, but God had a very important lesson to teach him. Let me ask you this. Have you ever had a weird dream and you didn't know what it meant? You know, most dreams don't have special meanings. Sometimes dreams are just silly. Other times they're scary. And often dreams don't really mean much of anything. In today's Bible story, we'll hear about a dream that did mean something. In fact, Nebuchadnezzar's dream was about something that was going to happen to him in the future. What do you think his dream is about? Well, could you imagine waking up one day as an animal? Imagine that you had to eat what animals eat and live where they live. Would that be fun? Maybe. 
Would it be scary? Probably. Let's watch today's story about a time when Nebuchadnezzar had to eat grass like an animal because God was going to teach him a very important lesson in a very unusual way. Let's watch. Hi friends, it's me, Megan, and I'm Jessie. Megan, listen to the dream I had last night. Okay. I dreamed that I was swimming, but it wasn't water I was swimming in. It was a huge bowl of gravy. Wow, Jesse, that's a strange dream. Yeah, I woke up hungry for some cheesy blueberry mashed potatoes with gravy. <laughs> okay, well guess what? In today's Bible story, King Nebuchadnezzar had a strange dream too. King Nebi Cheddar? What kind of name is that for a king? Did he invent cheddar cheese? Do I have him to thank for the cheese and my cheesy blueberry mashed potatoes? I love them. <laughs> no, King Nebuchadnezzar. King Nebuchadnezzar. <laughs> uh, closer, but no. King Nebuchadnezzar. You know what? I've got an idea. Why don't you keep practicing while we listen to the Bible story? Okay. Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, shared a message about the wonderful things God had done for him. One night, the king had a scary dream. He asked the wise men in his kingdom to tell him what the dream meant, but the wise men did not know. So the king told Daniel about his dream. I saw a big, strong tree. Its top was in the sky, and everyone could see it. The tree had beautiful leaves and fruit, and animals lived in and around the tree. An angel came down from heaven and said, Cut down the tree. Only the stump and roots would be left. Then the angel said something strange. The tree's mind would change from a human's mind into an animal's mind. He said this would happen so that people would know God is ruler over everyone, even kings. The dream made Daniel feel afraid too, and he told the king what it meant. The tree is you. You are great and strong, Daniel said. Like the tree was cut down, you will go away from people. You will live with wild animals and eat grass. Like the stump was left in your ground, your kingdom will not be completely destroyed. It will be given back to you when you learn that God rules over everything. One year later, the king's dream came true. He walked on the roof of his palace and said, My kingdom is great! I am powerful and wonderful! Suddenly, the king heard a voice from heaven. King Nebuchadnezzar, you will go away from people. You will live with wild animals and eat grass until you learn that God rules over everything. Nebuchadnezzar went away from people. He ate grass like a cow. His hair grew long like eagle's feathers and his nails grew sharp like bird's claws. After some time, the king looked up to the sky and praised God. He had learned that God rules over everything. His kingdom was given back to him, and the king worshipped God. Pride is thinking you are great. God showed the king that only God is truly great. Jesus is the king of kings who came to earth and died on the cross. Jesus saves sinners so we can show others that he is greatest of all. Wow, what a dream. Well, let's review. What plant was in Nebuchadnezzar's dream? That's right, it was a large tree that an angel said would be cut down. And what did the dream mean? The dream meant that God would force Nebuchadnezzar to live like an animal and take the kingdom away from him. And what did Nebuchadnezzar do when God restored his mind? 
That's right, Nebuchadnezzar praised God and said, God is in control of all things. And why do you think God did what he did with Nebuchadnezzar? Because God loved Nebuchadnezzar and wanted him to know him and to see that God is all-powerful and in control. See, Nebuchadnezzar was prideful and living for his own glory, and only God deserves glory. You see, King Nebuchadnezzar, he wanted to take all the credit and give himself the glory for building the kingdom of Babylon. He was prideful. And pride is when we think too highly of ourselves, when we refuse to praise God for what he has done. The Bible says that pride is sin. And Nebuchadnezzar, he didn't worship God alone. He believed that he was the most powerful king and that he deserved all the glory. God wanted Nebuchadnezzar to understand that only God deserves glory. You see, no matter what power Nebuchadnezzar had, it all came from God. And God could just as easily take it away. God humbled King Nebuchadnezzar to show that he is in control. But God also showed mercy to Nebuchadnezzar. Because if you remember in the story, at the end of the seven years, God restored his sanity. And he allowed him to rule over Babylon again. You know, sometimes for us in our lives, we're tempted to see ourselves as the most important people. What we forget is that God is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. He's the ruler of all creation. He created all things, and all things belong to him. You see, our pride may cause us sometimes, too, to doubt that God can hear our prayers. We may even think that God can't help us, or that we can just handle life without him. But those are lies. We need God, and he hears and helps us. So why do we pray? We pray because we trust God, and we know he hears us. We can pray to God anytime, anywhere. We don't have to use special words when we talk to God. We don't even have to use words at all. Because God knows our words before we say them. He knows our thoughts before we think them. The Bible shows us that we are sinful and we need God to save us. We're completely dependent on his grace. So it's kind of silly for us to think that we can do anything in our own strength. Pride steals God's glory. And that's why God humbled King Nebuchadnezzar, so that he could see that God alone deserves the glory. Jesus is the King of kings. He humbled himself and came to earth and died on a cross for our sins. Jesus saves us as sinners so we can live for God's glory. I'm thankful that we have a God who listens when we pray. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, that we can read your word. And we thank you, Lord, for this story of Nebuchadnezzar and how you showed him that you are in control of everything. Lord, you are powerful. You are almighty. Uh, and Lord, I thank you for watching over us and taking care of us. Keep us safe, Lord. Let your word be hid in our hearts that we might not sin against you. And may you help us to have a great week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I'm glad you joined us this week, and let's move on to Scripture time. stands 
forever. Okay? Let's do it one more time. 1 Peter 1.25 But the word of the Lord stands forever. Okay. All right. Are you ready to play your scripture game? Okay. Um, and I know tonight's pajama night, so go get your pajamas on. Go grab some pillows because instead of musical chairs, tonight we're going to play pillow, uh, musical pillows. So um, to help us learn our verse tonight. Have your parents take a piece of paper and put sections of the scripture on those pieces of paper. Put your pillows in a circle and then lay your... Um, pieces of scripture on your pillows and you're going to walk around and you're going to say the verse like we have here first Peter 125 and then but the word of the Lord stands forever and you'll keep going around and around about three times and then after you go around those three times then you're going to have your parent take out part of the scripture. So we'll take out this one, set it aside, and then we're going to go 1 Peter 1.25. But the word of the Lord. Now what was on that pillow? What was the part that was on that pillow? Stands forever. Yes, right. Okay, and then you'll go around again. 1 Peter 1.25 But the word of the Lord stands forever. Then you go around another time and they'll take out another part of the verse. And you'll set that aside. Now this is getting hard now. 1 Peter 1.25 But the word of the Lord stands forever and you do that until all of your pillows are totally have no scripture on it and then say your verse and you'll learn it really quick and uh, don't forget to turn in your videos of you playing musical pillows have a great time with uh, pajama night and learning your verse and we'll see you next week bye Well, welcome to Missions Time. In today's video, we're going to learn more about the Worthy family and where they're serving as missionaries. We're going to learn that there are some things that are different for Alicia and Ben because they live in Italy. Things like their school routine, uh, the language, the food, transportation. So let's watch today's video and find out more about missions in Italy with the Worthy family. Hi guys, every morning at 7 a.m. our family does a family devotion before we head off to school. Our school is real close and we can walk there in like five minutes. School here is a lot like school in the U.S. Except here we learn more languages because Italy is home to so many people from different countries. I'm learning three languages, French, Latin, and Italian. In Italian, Jesus loves you is Gesù ti ama. Can you say that? Gesù ti ama. Cosa facciamo domattina? Si fa il lavoro di quello di Oh, bravo! School is another great place to tell people that Jesus loves them. Throughout the year, we host outreach parties at our house, where we invite a whole bunch of our friends from school to celebrate things like holidays and special events. And there we can tell them about Jesus. In this area of Italy is where the story of Pinocchio was written. You know the story of the little wooden boy whose nose would grow every time he told a lie? You couldn't always trust what Pinocchio said. But we can always trust what God says. In Matthew, Jesus says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And remember, I am with you always, to the very end of the age. Not only is that an awesome promise, but it's also a command for us. 
go tell others about Jesus. And that's what we do. And one way we do that is by hosting a really big VBS camp during the summer. It's a lot like VBS in the States with games, activities, and a lot of stories about Jesus and how he loves us. VBS is so much fun, so remember God's promise. He will always be with you and go tell others. Well, I hope you were listening, so let's review. Who are our missionaries that we've been learning about? That's right, the Worthy family. And where are they serving as missionaries? You've got it. That's right, Arezzo, Italy. And how is school in Italy different than our school? Well, they can walk there, but they have to learn different languages. They do family devotions before school and many other things. How is their VBS? You know, they used VBS as an outreach. How is their VBS like ours? That's right. They play games and activities. They tell Bible stories and they tell others about Jesus. Do you remember what famous story was written in Arezzo, Italy? Pinocchio, that's right. And even though Pinocchio was known for telling false stories, everything we read in the Bible is true. And do you remember this phrase, Jesu te ama? What does it mean? It means Jesus loves you. That's right, and he does. Well, this is our final week of reminding you about our Operation Christmas Child Shoebox Project. Next week is the week for you to bring your box to the church and to pick up your gift bag. And we'll talk more about that later. But let's watch today's video that'll help us to hear the special sounds of Operation Christmas Child. And we're also going to find out about a special movie called Lola's Lion that's going to be showing on Facebook this Sunday night at 8 p.m. about Operation Christmas Child. So let's watch. You and I were very far away and have never met before. But I have been praying that this will be the perfect gift for you. Wow, that was so cool. Those sounds of Operation Christmas Child were awesome, and I can't wait to see the movie. How about you? Well, be sure to bring your shoebox next week on Wednesday, November the 18th to the next gift bag pickup, which will be a Thanksgiving bag pickup from 1 o'clock to 2 o'clock p.m. and again from 5 to 6 p.m., whichever time works best for you and your family. We'll also start handing out the Thanksgiving gift bags this Sunday, November the 15th, if you come to church right after the morning worship service down at the Fellowship Hall door. And you can also drop off your shoeboxes and your offerings at the same time. Well, until next time, goodbye, and we'll see you later. We are so excited you joined us for Awana this week, where our goal is always helping boys and girls know, love, and serve Jesus. We want to remind you that next week is the deadline to turn in your filled shoe boxes and bring in your final offering for Operation Christmas Child. Also, next Wednesday, November 18th, there will be a Thanksgiving bag pickup for each of your children between 1 and 2 o'clock and again between 5 and 6. 
There will also be one offered at Sunday, 11.30, November 15th, after the morning worship service. Each family will receive a Thanksgiving jar with post-it notes and pencils so you can write things that you are thankful for and store them in the jar. This is one thing I have never thought to be thankful for in all of my years. Sounds silly, but I think God is always glad to hear us thank Him for every good thing, no matter how small. Let's pray. Dear God, our Father, thank you for the air we breathe, the sunshine and the rain, for every day you give us to be with our family and friends. Thank you for all these parents who have dedicated their time to lead their children through these Zawana videos. Bless each child who listens and memorizes your word, and bless these shoe boxes as they go to children all around the world who have never heard about you. Give us all faith, hope, and love in Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. We hope you can join us next time for Awana, because kids matter to God.